Hello, welcome to the second video in this five part series that are discussing knee pain assessment. So let's get into it. So today's one's about posture. So um, part one, we looked carefully at the medical history and the things that you're doing in your current lifestyle with occupation, home, sports, um, looking for repetitive movements. Really the, the, what we were doing in part one was trying to find the source of the problem. Um, everything so in the, in the process in this assessment process really is doing exactly that trying to find the source and um, each each part of these um, things that we're, we're going through so uh, it, it, trying to add to our list of clues so in the first one we hadn't even really looked at you do anything yet we were just trying to see the, the things that you were sort of doing in your life that might have led to it now now we're sort of looking at a posture of, um, a couple of these are like static posture, but there's a, there's a few of them that we're looking in a dynamic um, regard as well. So I'm going to go through that in a minute. But basically, we're just trying to look at the any trying to just gather information as like okay, what things are specific to you that have led you to your problem that you have, or maybe you don't have a problem. Maybe you're you're about to develop one. So. Um, so a thorough examination is always needed and is with posture I, I probably don't hang my hat on it as much as I used to but it is still very useful to do so um, so firstly we need to define what posture is so so definitions are so postures like a simple one is the position from which movement begins and ends um, so if you basically if you start in a poor position like the guy on the right you'll do everything from that point onward in a poor position because your starting point was terrible so everything from that point on is going to be no good all right uh, if you start in a good position you've got every chance of doing it right doesn't guarantee you will though now that's that's the thing so i see many people that that have a nice posture but um, the way they move is not very good so um, so ideal posture is what we're sort of looking for which is this posture here and that's so definition is this that's the state of muscular and skeletal balance which protects the supporting structures of the body against injury or progressive deformity whether you are moving or not it is this it is during a state of ideal posture that the muscles will function most efficiently so in the case of knee pain when we're in a good position that knee joint is very well protected from injury and deformity as it suggests um, and you're very good chance that you can do everything and with little harm being done. Um, it doesn't guarantee it though. So um, a good little quote to keep in mind is um, from Vladimir Yanda as muscle imbalance in today's society is compounded by stress, fatigue and insufficient movement as well as a lack of variety of movement. Now that's that last few words, those last five words, lack of variety of movement, that's a that's a big one in terms of people who are doing a lot of running or just doing the same strength movements all the time. Um, that you start to develop postural problems from exercise that is just constantly the same. So you need to um, always have a program that's sort of countering the effect of the repetitious thing that you may you be using in your sport or your job or your occupation. The first one's obvious, like from insufficient movement. That's obvious, like if you don't do enough, you're going to start to get things and if you're sitting in chairs so this is repeat repetition but it's this last part if for the people who, who do a lot of exercise I would sort of be really paying attention to that the lack of variety of the movement all right so if we break down ideal posture so from side on this is um what I'm sort of looking for I'm really looking for if we're coming from the ear from the head down I sort of want the ear to dissect the shoulder this quite guy doesn't quite dissect the middle of the shoulder there. So he's pretty close but he's not quite, so he has a little bit of a forward head posture. Very subtle but a little bit there. And so we want to see the ear, the shoulder, dissect right through the middle of the pelvis and then right, you can't quite see his toes here but you'd want to see that lining up right in front of the ankle there. So I'm pretty confident that he's pretty close to that, right? So you would all agree he's pretty close to a good posture there. So in terms of ankle, uh, knee problems, the there's three things that I'm really looking a lot for. I'm really looking to see if the feet uh, and the knees are stuck in this hyperextension. So you can see here, this picture is a classic example of hyperextension. You can see how the feet have turned out as well. Um, versus, say, this picture here where it's neutral. Right? So 
whenever I see that I'm sort of suspecting weak feet or there's an ankle restriction or there's something going on maybe it is through the pelvis that's done that um, so I'm, I'm looking to see if these ankles are stuck in a plantar flexion I'm looking to see if the knees are hyperextended and I'm looking to see the degree of pelvic tilt and lumbar curve so do they have enough pelvic tilt or or, or is there is it missing so they're the things I'm really looking for in a side on position obviously there's things up above that I want to address as well but specifically for knees they're the things that I'm looking for um, so from a, a different postures from side on by the way so you know this is you don't really need to know the names of them as such but it's like a kyphosis this is extreme lordosis this one's just sort of like a forward head posture um, and this one's the neutral one so you can see like that guy before All right, you can see how the ear would stack right on top you're trying to look for all these sort of things that you know again it doesn't really tell you how you evolved it it just tells you that's what you're currently working with so if you're starting in this position everything from that point on is going to be having to cheat around that poor mechanical leverage that you have um, from front on um, this is where you, you can really obviously and I'll show you again an app that I use that you can easily download yourself but from front on I'm sort of looking to see if everything dissects right through your nose your sternum right down through your belly button so it should be a perfect 50-50 even distribution from the left and the right hand side of the body if you had a line that dissected you. Um, this is where you really see un any sort of uh, uneven um, where persons may be favouring the weak side and you can it's really noticeable when you use an app that I'll show you in a minute um, and you, you can really start to see like things like a scoliosis type thing happening, hip, hip hiking, uh, all strange things going on like that but you also get to see the feet again from the front on position if they're turning out and you'll see th abnormalities of like where you know like uh, bow legged or the knock knees usually a lot of the patellofemoral people are the knock knees not always but most people um, and again it could be something with the feet or something with the hip or it could be both of them all right so these are the things i'm looking for I'm also looking for the toes how well the toes are spread if i'm starting to see things like bunions appear toe gripping um, there are things I make notes of and think okay I, I, I've seen that now I need to be aware of that when I'm starting to do my mobility and stability assessments because I'm, I'm assuming that I'm, I need to find out why these things have evolved what, what's causing them to happen there's something going on around there I need to, I need to know more alright so how do you do your, your simple tests well there's a little um, I, uh, little app that I use on an iPad um, and it's called Posture Screen Pro and basically I can do, it gives me, I, I just basically take a picture of the person but the app I have to use these little grid points that um, using structural parts of the body so the eyeballs, the nose, the top part of the shoulders, the top part of the ribs here, the top part of the pelvis and the, and the ankles and then from side on you you've got all the other um, bony parts so knee joint, ankle joint, hip joint, uh, shoulder joint, ear all right and then from this the head, it overlays a grid on top of the picture and then you can really obviously see any abnormalities and, the, and the, the iPad will actually give you some measurements as well to sort of and it will instantly give you a report based on what you've put into the picture there so the key to it is the grid overlay even without all this stuff here this extra stuff which is great but the grid overlay for me um, really helps me to see things I don't see with a natural just the normal picture and it can be a useful tool in me moving before I move forward into any of the other assessments things that I might not have seen before and now I do and it's like it's really obvious okay and I'm going to start looking for more stuff when I get into the next uh, lot of tests now the other part the other postural tests I do are more manual and this these again these are very simple but geez they can be so powerful with the information they provide. Um, make sure you look in the description under the video here because there's a link of a video of how I do this and, and same with the iPad one. Um, so I, I didn't include it in this video because it makes it go too long but I'll put the link there so you can you can see these in, in video um, format of how I do them. But, but basically um, the, this first one is just asking a person to stand up against the wall so just line their head, their shoulders and their heels against the wall and then I'll just observe how much curvature they have through their spine that's really all I look for and maybe a couple other things uh, do, they, do I have to tell them to put their head against the wall or do they just do that themselves um, 
what happens, you know, how they feel when they're standing against it because they might make comments, um, things like that. But the main thing is here, how much curvature do I, do I fit my whole arm between their back and wall or do I hardly fit my hand? Um, I don't make any conclusions at this point, I just, I just make notes of what I see. The second part is, a, so the first one's a lumbar test, this next one's a thoracic test and basically I just ask them to sort of move their feet a bit away from the wall and then they just go into a bit of a posterior tilt so their back will flatten out on the wall and then I ask them to keep their back dead flat and then raise their arms above their head without any of their back coming off the wall. Most people really struggle on this and if I see an issue here, I know that there's sort of some rigidity through the thoracic spine and poor control through the lumbar um, and again it's just telling me there's something that they're, through this core control they just don't have it and um, again I don't make conclusions but it's something that I'll keep in mind when I'm moving forward. Um, so I've said it a few times here, don't make any conclusions. So um, just make sure that you're you're, you're recording everything you see on your little checklist here and all that information is sort of going to help you to really narrow down the exercise selection later on that's going to make the biggest difference in terms of their pain and long term solution. So um, just understand that some people are awesome on, post, on this posture thing and you may not find much but they have a lot of pain and then other times I see people with horrible posture with no pain at all. So that's where I said before, I probably don't hang my hat on it as much as other people do. Um, I'll, I'll probably go more on the movement, but in terms of me maybe finding something I hadn't seen or, uh, or, or keeping in my mind, okay, I need to bear that in mind moving forward. Um, this can be a handy sort of test to use. Uh, dynamic posture. Now this is where it's interesting because sometimes I see a person with awful static posture instantly recruit an almost a beautiful dynamic posture. It's like how can they go from standing so poorly and yet when I ask them to move they instantly jump into a, a position of movement that is just incredibly good. And a classic is, I see this a lot with surfers or skateboarders and people like that who have you learn through their their sport how to maintain a perfect balance and, and it can only be achieved with good posture. So they can adopt that posture within the movement that they've rehearsed so many times but, but when they stand and walk they're still adopting a, a different type of posture that's completely poor. So this is where the static posture may not show you this if that's all you're relying on and you make too many conclusions too soon. All right, so that's a good thing to keep in mind, and this will probably this will be more evident when we look at the movement so, side of things that are coming up in in one of the later steps. All right, so in summary, complete manual test and the visual tests. If you don't get the iPad, you could just do it from just observing someone and just have a checklist there. Um, get a physical therapist or chiropractor or someone to do it for you. Um, you're looking for asymmetry, so differences with left and right looking for valgus, like not valgus is knock knees, looking for weak feet, like if their feet are turned out or even high arches for that matter, looking for like toe problems, if they are gripper, they are bunions, uh, looking for excessive lumbar curvature, so that's sort of telling you there's issues around the hips. Um, don't make any conclusions yet, they see you just, you haven't completed your assessment, so just, just make notes, all right, lots of notes, they will help you to identify where the real leaks and the compensations are coming from so you can have the right strategy to address it. All right. Um, in part three we're going to start looking at the mobility assessments. All right. So that's the next part in part three. For the full program and stuff like that if you want to have all of the things laid out for you I mean, with all their pictures, instructions and there's the videos, there's, there's some, this one's specific to ACL and this one's just generalised knee. Um, you can get that from the website. Again, it's in the link in the description under the video here. Um, you go to that and go to our website and you can get all your hands on that straight away and download it. But it has everything in there that I'm just whipping through really quickly. It has it in great detail. Alright, so I hope all of this has helped you out so far and uh, I'll see you on our next step.